In this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare 1099s in QuickBooks Online. Now, I'm going to go through this pretty, pretty quick. I won't go in through some of the deep nuances. Um, I actually I recommend a course by my friend Alicia katz Pollock on doing that. I'll put a link in the description to her, to her course that deep dives into this. But for most people, this walkthrough should be enough. So let's go through it. So first, I'm in QuickBooks Online. <clears throat> first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that whatever contractor you have created, whatever vendor you have created, is uh, logged in or tagged as a 1099 contractor. So for example, I'm going to go into my uh, Expenses tab and then click on Vendors so I can look at all of my vendors that are in there. If I click on Contractors in the tab, it would be basically the list of vendors that have been tagged as a 1099 contractor, which at the moment there isn't any. So I'm going to go into vendors and maybe pick up an existing vendor that we have. So let's say this one by the name of Alejo Sketch. Let's say, that, for example, he's a contractor. That's his name, Alejo Sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and um, click on him, click on his name to edit him. And then I'm going to click on edit. So then I click on edit here. And then in here, I can make sure that I put all the information in here. So let's say that this is not a company name. This is actually a full name. So I'm going to put here Alejo, Mr. Alejo Sketch. Okay, so that's his name. I, I also want to make sure I put a phone number, email, all that stuff is important. So I'm going to put a, a, an address because an address is actually required. So I'm going to put here 123 Main Street, Miami, Florida. Three, 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 three. Okay, good, good to go. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down to where it says additional info, taxes. In here, I'm going to put the business tax ID or the social security number. So if the contractor is actually a business, you're going to put their business tax ID number or the EIN number. Or if, if the contractor is an individual, it's a, it's a human being, John Doe, Will Smith, Alejo Sketch, whatever his name is, we're going to put a social security number. So let's do a social security number with the hyphens and everything. And, uh, and we're going to click on this little checkbox that says track payments for 1099s. You must do that. Once you do that, this is still a vendor, but the vendor gets also logged as a contractor. So I'm going to click on save. And let's put here uh, Sketch Alejo and then click on save. And then now that, that he's saved, he's got an address, he's got his, his checkbox for 1099. Now when I click on contractors, now he shows up in there. Now it says W9 ready. What that means is I actually went in there and I created uh, the vendor with full information. If I had missing information, let's see if I can edit uh, Alejo here for a second. If I was missing information, let's say, for example, I was missing the address. I'm going to just... Um, uh, well, in this case, I can't remove it anymore because it's already there. But if the address was missing, what would end up happening is when, when I go back into this list, it would, it would not say W9 ready. It would say, you know, information missing. So, for example, let me go into vendors here and I'm going to grab this one, a Libby bar. And I'm going to edit this one and I'm going to click on edit. And I'm going to put a checkbox here that says track payments in 1099s. And then click on save. So I still have information missing. When I go in contractors, notice that it says W9 missing. So it's not like the physical form is there. It's just that there isn't enough information for you to be able to prepare the 1099. You have to have a social security. You have to have a, a tax ID. You have to have an address. Otherwise, you can't move forward. Okay, so that's the first step is you have to make sure that whoever you paid in QuickBooks is set up and is tracked to be a 1099. The next step would be to click here where it says prepare 1099s. Now we're going to make the assumption that transactions are already in QuickBooks and we'll go back and check that in a second. So I'm going to click on prepare 1099s and it will take me into uh, the option where QuickBooks uh, prepares the 1099 for you. And that's going to cost, uh, let me go down here. It doesn't say the price, uh, but I think it's like 15 bucks a form or something like that. Or here where it says use QuickBooks to prep on your own and it's like $5 a form. Okay? In either case, uh, you click on try it now. You don't actually see the price until you get there. I'm going to choose <clears throat> let QuickBooks prepare for me just so you can see what that looks like. And then I'm going to click on try it out, pay only when you file. So what it does is it actually just goes through and double checks. Is the company name correct? Does the company have an address? Uh, does it have a tax ID? This is the company that's issuing the 1099s. And then we're going to go to confirm info. 
then it goes to the next step and it kind of just it does a check for you right because we're using the fully automated one it does all the check for you so you click on view results and then it takes you into the next screen now in the next screen it shows you every single contractor that you paid uh, that could potentially qualify for a 1099 and the dollar amount for each one now notice that some of these have that incorrect missing w9 and only this one the sketch alejo is the one that actually says ready to file because that's the only one that we've entered the full information for it but this actually um starts essentially uh guessing what what potentially could be a 1099 and that's this is part of that automated system where it actually uh, uh tries to pick up information for you now i'm going to x out of that for a second and I'm going to go back into prepare 1099s and I'm going to use um, use QuickBooks to prepare on your own and then click on try it out. And you'll see the screens are slightly different. Right? And th the reason for that is because it's not such an automated system and it actually takes you through the full setup screen. As I mentioned earlier, this one's actually a little bit um, less expensive. The other one's like 15 bucks a form and this is like $5 a form. Of course, you're watching this video, so I think you could pay the $5 a form. You, you don't have to have uh, QuickBooks, uh, pay QuickBooks extra for whatever it is that they're doing that's better, supposedly, than do it on your own. Anyway, so, so in here, nothing's being shown because we haven't mapped or told it which accounts in your chart of accounts are the ones that we want to link to the 1099. Now, on the previous screen, it basically showed all the vendors and all the payments, regardless of which account it landed on. That's the purpose of that full automated system where it tries to just grab everything for you. In this manual system, you actually have to tell it explicitly which accounts in your chart of accounts qualify for that. So by that, we're going to click on select accounts. And then in here, we're going to look for the one that uh, we would, the only one that we would probably issue a 1099 on. So we're going to search something like contracting fees. So let's say consulting fees will be one of them. Or is there anything as the subcontractors know? Uh, anything that says labor, okay, so let's say casual labor and cost of labor. So essentially, we mapped three accounts, casual labor, cost of labor, and consulting fees. So, uh, so basically what this means is that any other accounts that were used to pay that contractor would be excluded from the 1099, okay? So this is a very important piece of it, is that you're specifically telling it which ones. And the reason why that matters is because you may have a contractor that you paid, let's say, $6,235.45, where the 6,000 was their fee, and the 200 something dollars was a reimbursement for travel, where the reimbursement for travel would be excluded from the 1099 and the $6,000 would. There's a lot more nuances on whether you pay them with a credit card or a check or Venmo or whatever, like all this stuff, it's like, there's a lot of moving parts. And I would recommend just joining like a full 1099 course to like, to get into all of those details. but. For the time being, let's assume that none of those uh, exceptions, special situations are happening. So now we selected our three accounts, consulting, casual labor, uh, cost of labor, and then we have to tell it which box in the 1099 that goes to. So th there's multiple boxes in a 1099. Let me just pull this up here. I'm gonna go into Google and type 1099 NEC and pull up a copy of the form so you can see this. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Okay, perfect. And let's zoom in so you can see what the form looks like. So this is what the actual uh, printed form would look like. And that question says, where am I reporting that dollar amount? So for a 1099 NEC, which is for, for contractors, uh, most of the stuff just goes into this box one, non-employee compensation. There's weird situations in which you would report stuff in different boxes. Or if you're doing uh, the old form, which is the 1099 miscellaneous, it's an entirely different form. Let's pull that one up so we can see that. And let's zoom in, and that's used for different situations. So, for example, if you 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 pay your landlord, or you pay royalties, or you pay other things. So, there's between the 1099 NEC and the 1099 MISC. MISC. There's different form numbers where things go to. For the most part, especially when we're doing dealing with 1099 NEC, uh, the reality is most of the, every, every what you guys are going to be reporting is your contractors, your non-employee compensation, which is box one. So that's what QuickBooks is asking. It's saying, hey, where where am I reporting these dollar amounts? Is it an M M MISC, is it an NEC? So we're gonna go to the box one NEC, which is the most common one. And then we have to go into each one and click on NEC and each one 
and click on NEC. So once you have selected every single box with uh, box one NEC, you have mapped every account to box one on the 1099 NEC, you go to next. Uh, and then on the next screen, it tells you which of your 1099s would have reportable payments. And the reason for that is probably because I didn't have any, um, any uh, contractors that were paid to that account specifically. Okay, now I click here in the drop-down menu, there's reportable payments and non-reportable payments. If I switch to non-reportable payments, it also shows you which, uh, which payments um, were made uh, either uh, through the specific contractors that are excluded from the report. So you can actually see uh, the, the amounts that are excluded. And then you can see uh, not tracked for 1099, which are the vendors in which we haven't marked track for 1099, but you paid amounts um, it amounts to them, so it's possible that some of these could be eligible. And that, that was similar to the other to the other uh, page where it was showing um, everybody at the uh, a list of basically all, everybody that you have in there. So, for example, let's say I grab this one and click on Add to the Track List, and essentially adds that person to to be a potential um, 1099. But again, the reason why they're not showing here is because we're missing a piece, which we're about to go through which is we don't have any actual transactions pointing to those accounts that we mapped, okay? So at this moment, I'm, I'm actually gonna X out of this. Actually, I'll, I'm gonna X out completely. And I'm gonna actually go into uh, new and I'm gonna write a check. And this is probably the best way to illustrate this with an actual example. Let's grab here Alejo. And let's write a check to the category that we, one of the categories that we use. So we have consulting fees. And let's say we also have a travel. So this actually kind of shows you how um, I can have, like the example I said, we can have 6,000, let's say 6,000 in, in consulting fees. And then we have $235.89 in travel. So I wrote this person a single payment. And let's say I pick any date in 2024, because we're you know backdating this to 2024 as we're doing the 1099s for the whole year. So as long as the vendor, again, that's been previously marked as 1099able, and I use one of the accounts, the categories in there, this payment will be eligible for a 1099. So let me do save a new, and then I'm gonna grab uh, the other um, uh, vendor I had here, which was uh, was a Levy Bar. And then let's say for a Levy Bar, I'm gonna grab another another expense here that's not mapped, and I'll put here whatever nine thousand dollars, and then I'm gonna click on save and close, and then I'll grab. Uh, one more, let's do a, um, a check. It could be a bill too, as long as the bill is paid. And I'll grab another random vendor here. And then this is gonna be uh, the labor account. And let's say this is gonna be uh, $800. Okay, so then we're gonna click on save and close. So I have multiple payments historically in my accounting for uh, vendors that we have marked as 1099-able vendors. So at this point, I can actually do a runner report. I can click on view all contractor payments. And when I go in, in that and I choose uh, last year, I can actually see all the payments that were made to all of the vendors that I have marked as 1099. Now, not, not all of these are reportable because as, remember there's speaker fee and then there's other travel and then there's marketing and then there's auto. Remember, none of those were mapped uh, for the 1099. So let me go back in here and then I'm gonna click on prepare 1099s. And then we're gonna go back into the screen again um, and then go back and go to confirm and then make sure that this is mapped as we talked about earlier. This is all already mapped and saved from before. I'll click on next. And now we get to see the two contractors that would have a potential reportable. So we had Andrea for 800 and then we have Alejo for 6,000. Now here in the drop-down menu, we have non-reportable payments. There actually isn't any non-reportable payments in here. So we're gonna go back to reportable payments. And then if we go back to not track for 1099, it's the same list, right? That has every single payout that you made. But then once we're pretty much satisfied with this, and again, that Alibi bar one doesn't have anything here because we, we didn't pick one of those mappable accounts. Um, we used, I think auto was the one that we used. Actually, if I go back, if I actually go back in this screen and add auto, which is the one that we use for that Alibi bar one. So if I pick auto in here 
and then I add that into my mapping, then I should be expecting uh, that to show up here and I should expect the $9,000 to show up. So now you start seeing how the mapping is so important because again, as I mentioned, there might be payments that you wanna include and payments that you don't wanna include based on the specific account that you use to categorize their expenditure. Then I select who I wanna issue a 1099 to. Right now, the only one I'm prepared to issue one is to Alejo because tax IDs are missing, so I would have to go back and fix the tax, I can click on edit, fix addresses and tax IDs if I wanna include that in the reporting. Let's say we're just gonna do Alejo for now, so I'm gonna click on next. Then it gives you a quick preview. Okay, so the total amounts that we're about to file is this one. You can click on view summary and kinda of just get like a print ready summary of everything you're about to, everything you're about to send or everything that's uh, pre-prepared to send, but right now it's only gonna do one. If I click on preview, I actually get to see what the 1099 is gonna look like prior to filing. And then the next step, I would go to next. Um, this would, uh, it will go through the process of whether this is gonna be a 1099 filed to the state uh, and IRS or just IRS, depending on the state. Some states require that, some states don't. I'm gonna click on next. Then it says, okay, these are ready to go. And then once I'm ready to go, I click on continue and e-file and that would be the very last step. Or you can click on no, I'll print and mail. And then um, here's where you can actually print uh, straight from here. So if you have uh, pre-printed forms, you can print on them and physically mail them. I don't recommend that. That's just gonna be a hot mess. But if you have a pre-printed form that kind of looks like this in actual print paper, and then you're gonna put uh, the, out the output, the actual details that go on, on the form that's kind of how this works. But we always kind of recommend to do um, e-filing. So here's where you do your, your final print and, um, and it'll ask you to you know, verify your account and obviously pay uh, prior to finishing and then you'll be able to do that. And then there's another screen where it kind of shows you the statuses of the 1099s, but you know, I haven't actually done the filing because this is where I stopped. Um, and that should be um, uh, good enough for you. So before wrapping up, I just want to make sure that we know um, how to run the reports, okay? Or actually, there's really just one report. So we go into reports and we click on where it says reports, we click on that. And then we're gonna search for a report uh, called 1099 Transaction Detail Reports, really the only real functional report that QuickBooks has. 1099 Transaction Detail Report will take you to a report that shows you all your 1099 contractors. You could choose the date range here for whatever fiscal year you wanna use all the 1099 contractors and every single payment that applies to the 1099 and their tax ID at the end. If you click on the little gear button here, you can add a couple more things here, like the vendor name or whatever. Unfortunately, you can't add the address. A lot of people wanna add the address in this report. You just can't, you have to go somewhere else to get a, um, a list of addresses. And that's it, that's what you see is what you get. That's pretty much what you can get when it comes to uh, the 1099 report. And the other thing I wanna add is um, you don't have to do 1099s inside QuickBooks Online. There's actually a third-party service that our firm uses called Tax 1099 by Zenworks. And um, the, per, the cost per filing is actually a lot smaller. So for li larger volume 1099s, it might be worth it for you to use a third-party system. It's not pretty and smooth like doing everything within QuickBooks, you're using a, another app but it just, it's just a little bit different. So I'm gonna put a link to that video if you wanna see that. It's like a 40 minute video. I go into a lot of depth in that on how to use that system. Uh, so you, you can check that out as an alternative to using QuickBooks Online for filing your 1099s. Anyway, I hope that was useful. See you in the next one.